all right guys uh welcome to this uh, video where we are going to talk about um the different type of task in reinforcement learning right so we have looked at uh reinforcement learning its components and uh, solution framework so we are going to look at the type of tasks that are in reinforcement learning and in general all the tasks in reinforcement learning can be classified into two subtypes right and these subtypes include uh, episodic so we can say a task is an episodic type or we can say a task is a continuous task right so just look up your dictionary to see what episodic or continuous mean right so what is an episodic task right like you watch movies what is an episode right so one episode ends another starts and ends so something that has a start and an end right so that's what we can say is an episodic task so you have a a task that has a start point and an end point is an episodic task. So in terms of um, our trading, so let's say that you want to um, you want to trade and record your performance on a monthly basis. So you only trade from first to thirty first, and then you take a record, start of the month to end of the month. So your trading is episodic. So the start point is the start the first day of the month and the last and the end point is the last day of the month. So we can say that is an episodic task. So uh, we can outline it as a state action reward uh, sequence like we've already mentioned. And so uh, you can see like an episodic task can be represented in a form uh, like this. Right. So what is a continuous task? Right, so we've looked at episodic. What is a continuous task? So a continuous task is just a task that goes on forever, right? It never ends. So, for example, if you look at the like, if you're a trader doing trading, so you can trade every day, right, till infinity. Your children can take over your account and your grandchildren, and so on and so forth. So, trade the trading never ends. You keep doing that for the rest of your life. So that is continuous as opposed to um, episodic where you keep your records on a monthly basis, right? And so we can represent a, a continuous task. So you, uh, the, the like a sequential loop where the end is infinity. We ne we're never going to stop, right? And so we can also represent it in our looping sequence like this. All right. So we've seen okay we have uh, this two type of task how do we solve a uh, reinforcement learning task right uh so we want to build an agent that takes actions that maximize our expected reward like like in a day trading ex uh gives us the best reward in a month in a week in a year right we want to build an agent so how do we go about building that agent, right? We've already seen this framework and we know that our, our agent here has to learn to make profit, right? So in reinforcement learning, we say that this agent learns a policy, right? So it learns this policy after interacting with this environment. It's going to learn a policy you know we've already laid out a framework how does it learn the policy by looping on by taking uh, states from this environment getting feedback through the reward and taking actions right so it uses this policy to take actions right so the policy is used to select the best actions that gives the best rewards so our agent is learning to get the best policy that gets the best that makes the best decisions that gives the best results the, what is the best results here so we are training an agent until it becomes a champion right it finds it finds an optimal policy and so this policy 
this agent is able to so if you can make like 21.7 percent of your return in a month that's a great policy so you have to remember here that um, though you're trading this agent you trading you train it in an environment let's just say for example you are you're an athlete right so you play football and you play in the english premier league so f you you don't you you don't need to win every game to become the champion of that league right you need to win the highest number of games compared to other teams so for our agent we are training this agent for it to be able to go into a league which is a trading environment and get the best points possible in that environment so it is a champion in that environment so I, our agent in a trading environment is is learning to become the champion so we just use the the, the the premier league as an example so for example if you are a team that plays only in the premier league if you really want to test the strength of your of your team take it to another league like the champions league and see if it's gonna how far it's gonna go or take it to uh, so the champions league is like oh, all right it evaluates it sees like all right how far this team is gonna go like teams from different leagues come and compete or you go to the world cup and then here you can see how your agent performs and you can know that all right this is an agent that does really really well in different settings right so we, you can train an agent that can perform well in all kinds of settings. So let's see um, what our policy really is, right? So our policy is like the brain. Like when we train an agent, we train it and it has a policy, which is like the brain of the agent. And this brain defines the behavior of the agent. So the way the agent makes decisions is based on this policy right and then the policy in 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 mathematical terms is a function that we want to learn so uh let's just say the way you think is a so someone can predict your behavior in a certain situation right so your brain has a way that it functions and so we have uh thought our uh, we have we we have uh, our, our, our agent has learned a policy to behave in a market environment that's what we have uh, we trained it for right so so we have a we can say that this policy is a function right this the brain functions the policy fun is a function that works how we want it to work in this environment right and the goal is to maximize profit right which is the best policy so talking of function function you've heard if you've uh, learned some mathematics before you know a function is a mat we always use it in mathematical terms right to bring it to our training like in in reinforcement learning training we can say our function so our function can be like so let's say a function of price right so if we train our agent and it sees price what action is it going to take so a function of price equals to an action so when it sees a certain price it takes a certain action so remember that this is just an example so it could be a function of price volume uh, daily high daily low moving averages so this could be this could be so many different uh, we can add so many different variables in here to inform this agent so a function of those variable is going to define the action so that's why we, you can always hear like we are learning a value function we are learning a policy right and then let's say for example we see a price of 20,000 of Bitcoin what are you going to do a function of 20k can be equal to what buy sell or hold we don't know that a function of 50k is going to be buy sell or hold we don't know 120k the same so the action the, this function the, the 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 our policy is going to learn to make decisions based on this uh, 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 on the price so a policy is like all right when it's 20k what action should I take when it's 50k so this is the brain of the agent. It's learning to make decisions.